Hello everyone, this is Samirian, and in this video we are going to go over the path creator again and how you can use it to interact with the player's figure itself. Now there's three main ways we can make the path creator uh, work with the actual figures. Uh, the first one is relatively simple. We'll just draw a quick straight line here. And the first thing we can do is we can turn this path into a rail slide with this simple option of turning rail slide on. And that means that now our figure can actually use this path as a rail slide. And that, of course, is the first and most simple way to do it. You can turn the path wherever you want. You can make a very complicated rail slide. You can use visual effects to show where the rail slide is. But in essence, it's a very simple thing we can do. Now the next thing we can do is I'm going to put a button down right here. And I'm also going to put a camera down because we can make a platforming game using the path creator tool. And uh, we can make it so that we can really lock the figure down with the path creator tool. And I'm going to demonstrate by, let's just throw down, throw down a block right in the middle here. And let's get really fun. Put down another block. And we're going to set this up so that when I press this button, this side scrolling camera is going to activate. And the other thing you do is you can send an input to the path creator tool here called activate 2d character movement which will turn it uh, into a mode where the character will be able to travel along this path as far as the first and last point go and depending on the settings the how far he can deviate left and right of this path is based on the settings of 2D character movement. The width is set to zero, so right now he can't deviate at all from the path. They're completely stuck to the path. It's perfect for platforming. But you could actually increase the width uh, so that you can actually limit a character to how far away from the path line they can actually go. It's another way of, instead of using scalable barrier blocks, you can limit where the player can go. In this option, force 2D character face, and all that does is when it's on, uh, as you'll see right here, as the character is traveling along this line, he can either face towards that spline, or he can face towards the back spline. He can't face forward, he can't face backwards. That's also good for platforming if there's enemies involved, and you don't want him randomly shooting off, off the screen. You want him shooting left or right, and that's it. So, we're going to demonstrate this now, and I'm going to just hit this button, and as soon as I touch this spline, uh, did I actually hook that up? I did not. Of course I didn't. Helps if you actually hook it up. I'm going to say activate 2D character movement, and you can activate it for individual teams, individual players, all the players. Right now I'm just going to say triggering player. I'm the one pushing the button, I'm the one going to be on the spline. And there, now I'm on this spline, and I can only move left and right. I cannot move up and down. And Actually, I want to move this camera back a bit to give us a better view. Push the button again. And here we go. I'm now on the spline. I can only look left or right. And of course I can turn that option on off if I want, but I kind of like that option. I can't go forwards or backwards, but I can still You'll see here, I cannot go farther than this spline, but I can go as high and low as I want while I'm traveling along this path, which is perfect for platforming. And I never turn the rail slide off. 
and I can't go past the last spline. So that is great for platforming. Um, it's a really good ability to have. I'm just going to delete some of this stuff now. And we're going to show you the final thing you can do with a path creator that will interact well with people. I'm going to put a path here, 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 and that'll be it. And what you can do is you can create your own race using the path creator. Um, I'm going to set looped to on. And here you'll see some extra options. Visual effect on checkpoint path. Now checkpoint path is when we're doing a type of race. So you see here there's even a race option. I'm going to set it to two laps just to finish it up quickly. Now default path checkpoint is what object will appear on every path or every point of this path to show the player where to go next. And so I'm going to put some challenge orbs as the default. And I'm going to turn this visual effect on chat on checkpoint path on and it's a clever little option that every time you cross cross a point on this path it will draw a line to show you how to get to the next point on the path and every point on that path you can actually change it so that it is not the default one we just set it can be something individual since we're on the starting point i'm going to make the starting point a racing gate and every other point on the path will be a gold challenge orb. And that's how simple it is to set it up. Now I'm going to drop a couple fireworks displays here. I'll put one right over there and I'll put one over here just to demonstrate uh, one of the, some of the options. Uh, one of the outputs you can do from the path creator is checkpoint path race complete. That's when we're done all the laps we've set uh, in the property there that I had set to two. So once the race is done we are going to get a large red Disney Infinity logo popping up out of that fireworks machine. And let's just make sure it's pointed towards us. A little trick for these fireworks cannons. Wherever that red little stick sticking up is, that is put it on the left of the fireworks display and, and that will be the front uh, or where, where you'll see the firework from. I'm going to show you there's not many options out of uh, the individual checkpoints but there is path checkpoint reached by player. This will only fire if you're in a race and you cross that checkpoint. So I'm going to say during the race every time I cross that one we're going to do a large blue flower and that's it. And to start the race is a simple start checkpoint path tracking. That's all there really is to create your own course, uh, however you want it to go, wherever you want it to go. And you'll see the racing gate has shown up. And so I cross the race and see how that visual effect showed me where to find the next orb. And you'll see it visual effect has gone again and again and it's not going to keep drawing out to where our next one is and when I hit this one we should get firework display which we did and every point on our path will show uh, the object we've selected now I shouldn't get a fireworks display here because I'm not completing the race I need another lap so now, uh, this should fire again, because I've just crossed it again. And when I cross this one, we should now get that fireworks, because we've finished the race. And there it is. The race is now complete. So those are the three main things you can use a path creator to do to interact with the player's character themselves. Uh, this has been Sumerian, and I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you.